Hi, I'm Stephen Tromans and uh, this is the first in my series of Promised, what I called in the trailer podcasts, except I'm told that's a completely the wrong term. Whatever this is, God knows, it's certainly not a podcast. But anyway, I'm walking here in a little bit of woodland around the lovely village of Histon, where I live, north of Cambridge. I walked out of the house down the guided busway that goes up towards Huntingdon, and here I am in the woods. And um, I've uh, really enjoyed walking here during the lockdown period. I've discovered a new, some things. There is a tree, we're not going to see it today, but there is a tree which is the second oldest in East Anglia, going back to 17, sorry, 1417, uh, when it was an acorn, grown up since then. So what am I going to talk about today? I think I'll talk a bit about the planning white paper. So many people have talked about that, haven't they? Oh gosh, you're fed up with it, but I've got a few insights for you. So, uh, what am I going to say? Well, uh, it's not unfamiliar, is it, this territory? I mean, I go back to the period 1980 or thereabouts, and I was starting out as a lecturer at uh, Cambridge, and uh, enterprise zones, later attempts to free up the planning system, make it do what people want to get things built, um, they've never really come to much, so is this going to be any different? Well, people suggest it will. If you saw Kit Kat's uh, talk, you'll have seen he puts a lot of credence on the Prime Minister. Boris having put his forward to it. Uh, wonderful words, but I don't think that's enough to really guarantee this is going to deliver to you. Uh, anyway, um, where is this going to take us? Well, I'm hoping that this woodland I'm in uh, is going to be within the threefold protected category. I certainly I hope it's not going to be a growth area or a renewal area. That would be terrible to try and stop that if it was proposed, but I don't think it will. Um, anyway, so we're going to be in this wonderful world which I'm starting to call Kit Kat land. It's a world of certainties where targets are handed down, local authorities accept them, Land's all divided up neatly into one of three categories, and we all know where we are. Well, I don't know. I think it's all going to end in tears, actually, but we'll see. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in there, isn't there? I mean, we all want uh, development plans to become shorter. Uh, I'm just going to turn down here and uh, ri get rid of a lot of this nonsense on uh, SEA, SA, all of that. It's all far too long and far too wordy. However, uh, the main point of what I'm going to say is this, that I think all of this is potentially missing a very serious opportunity. I think the two opportunities are these. One is to develop affordable homes, which we critically need in the right places. And secondly, to have a real step change in the environmental quality of new housing, which frankly, let's be honest, is quite abysmal, isn't it, at present? Houses get built, they're not in any way future-proofed uh, for... Oh, I'm just going to stop here. There's a rather lovely tree here, which uh, quite often I go and grab a few apples off. I think they've all fallen off at the moment, so I can't stop and get any apples. But anyway, uh, there we are. Uh, I mean, the housing standards are pretty abysmal. So uh, I know there's talk of uh, having future home standards, changes to the building regs and so on, and I'm very glad that the Committee on Climate Change is making a fuss about that and holding the government's feet to the fire on it. But I, I wonder, I mean, I wonder how far these things are really, really going to be integrated as they should be into this wonderful new planning system we're going to have. That to me is really the challenge. I feel that the changes have been largely designed by planners, by lawyers, planning consultants who really just want to see things get built. And uh, the vision of developers uh, poring over pattern books to build beautiful things. Uh, well, if you believe that, fine. But what we really need is houses which are future-proofed, won't need retrofitting, as the white paper says, quite rightly. But how are we going to achieve that? That's got to be somehow hardwired, it seems to me, into this new planning system. That's got to be the, the challenge. And that uh, is where I'd like to see the government really picking up the baton, joining up the pieces and putting together all of their pledges on environmental standards and future homes and energy efficiency and really getting those baked in to this new planning system. So 
there we are that's number one that's my thought for the day um, I'll come back I'll have something else on a future occasion but I hope you've enjoyed those thoughts for now there we are I'll just give you a view around the countryside there's Nyab Institute of Botany there's the path I've just come down so there we are I'll say bye for now and uh, stay safe and well <laughs>